Thank you for joining me for the seventh episode of Pueblo Artwork. I'm Megan Wilbar, Museum Coordinator for the InfoZone Museum at the Rawlings Library. And while our museum is closed, art is still happening in Pueblo. This episode zooms in on five Pueblo artists included in Jeffrey Moore's photography series entitled Self-Doubt and the People Inspire Me. It starts with Jeffrey Moore and then we'll show you four extra um, artists included. Um, so please enjoy the episode. Pueblo has a multitude of artists working throughout the city in varying mediums and styles. Jeffrey Moore, a Pueblo photographer, tapped into the uniqueness of each artist through his photography series entitled Self-Doubt and the People Who Inspire Me. The series is currently on view at Blowback Gallery and features 20 images of Pueblo artists. This episode zooms in on five artists included in the series, photography Jeffrey Moore, Christine Boyd, Shan Palmer, Bob Marsh, and Matt Refik. Jeffrey Moore was in need of a project when a friend made a suggestion to walk two blocks every day and take a picture. That got him thinking that he needed something more challenging. He thought of the artists that he knew and how they inspired him. It would be a project consisting of editorial portraits that would be a great exercise and allow him to use all of his skills and knowledge of photography. With the completion of phase one of the project, he's looking into phase two to document the Pueblo artist movement of our time as it becomes a hotspot for talented people. For each photograph in the series, he always had an image in mind based on his subject's work. He does a loose interview to ask them how and where they work and what inspires them. He scouts a location before the session and chooses a lens based on the setup that he has in mind. The image always evolves as they shoot. He learns something new about that person and may change the lighting or see something that he didn't expect. He started taking pictures with a 110 camera that he got for his ninth birthday. It had a telephoto and macro adapters. 
He got his first 35 millimeter when he was 11 and was soon in the dark room at the Sangro de Cristo Art Center, learning to print from John Suhey. Fashion was his goal and after art school and assisting a variety of photographers in Denver, he moved to New York City to assist Bob Frame. With Bob Frame, they had assignments for Harper's Bazaar every month and shot fashion ads, celebrities, and Bloomingdale's catalogs in between. As far as Photoshop, Jeffrey's old school, he grew up shooting transparency film and questions if anybody remembers Kodachrome. Growing up, he was never grounded. His mother just took his Kodachrome away. The exposure had to be spot on and he would crop in the camera. There wasn't any manipulation. He hasn't learned Photoshop because he doesn't want to fall back on it. He uses Adobe Lightroom, which basically is the dark room. To see the series in person, visit Blowback Gallery at 131 Spring Street or see them on Jeffrey Moore's website, jeffreymoorephotography.com. Christine Boyd has been a ceramic artist since 1989, creating both functional and dysfunctional ceramics. She started her career in the arts as a puppeteer, teaching art classes to children. She went on to obtain a BFA with an emphasis in clay from Metropolitan State College of Denver. She worked as a full-time potter and mother from her home studio for 10 years, teaching classes and workshops, and sold her work at art fairs, galleries, and her studio. Due to a serious accident in 1999, she lost her relied upon ability to throw, so she got to work developing the hand building method she uses to this day. Out of porcelain, Christine makes dishes, lamps, and occasionally bobblehead sculptures. She views the forms as a canvas for her design work. She works in porcelain as the white color is the most neutral background for her designs. She uses similar images and designs that are repeated in her work crows, magpies, flower, and leaf like designs. These images are often incorporated with new designs and travel with her through time. Christine is always experimenting with different surface treatments. She was initially attracted to ceramics and pottery because of the brightly colored work from Italy. She quickly learned that a low fire was best for color, unlike her background in high gas firing methods. She decided to work in black and white to keep things in the studio simple and clean. As technology moved along, so did the possibilities with ceramic color and the ability to achieve bright, vibrant color in high heat environment. Christine uses high fire ceramics because of its durability. Now she can get the best of both worlds, durability and the color that sparked her interest in ceramics. In 2014, she started to experiment with small amounts of color and continues to develop it. Christine relocated to Pueblo in 2016 and can be found in her downtown all clay studio. You can also find her on Instagram and Facebook and her website allclay.com. Shannon Palmer is a surrealist painter and designer who lives and works in Pueblo. Her colorful works incorporate strong symbology and surreal landscapes to encourage the viewer to question their own perception and contemplate life and death. Her distinctive style often draws inspiration from dreams and long meditation sessions, where she aims to explore her subconscious mind. As a teenager, Shannon sustained nerve damage while working and has difficulty using full range of motion in her hands. Using obstacles as inspiration, she works under the alias Dead Hand and created Dead Hand Art in 2018. Shannon states, I've had a few deeply profound experiences that led me to realize if I didn't become an artist, I would regret it for the rest of my life. Shannon was raised as a Jehovah Witness and was exposed to doomsday imagery at a very young age. This imagery has affected her life and body of work. She is grateful to have overcome the limitations of the church and have a life and career in which she can explore both the subconscious and conscious imagery of her past. Another huge influence was losing her mother to domestic violence in 2014. She often channels her emotions of missing her and processing that trauma into healing in her work. Shannon typically works from imagination for both her paintings and costume work. When imagery or ideas come to her, she's sure to jot them down on scrap of paper so she doesn't forget how she sees that image. Usually an idea will come to her and will slowly reveal itself over a few days. When she has a clear picture, she knows it's time to work. Typically everything within her paintings has a meaning and believes that symbology is vital to her practice. Her works can currently be seen in person at the Hanging Tree Cafe on Union Street in Pueblo, Pilos by Jesse Salon in Pueblo West, and Art Gallery Tattoo in Colorado Springs. You can also find her at her website, deadhandart.com. Bob Marsh has been making music and art for most of the past 75 years. 
He moved to Pueblo at the end of November 2015. His first introduction to Pueblo came with an invitation to conduct a two-day workshop in free improvisation. He came to Pueblo and discovered a city that looked much like the Detroit of his childhood. He found a lot of artists and a lot of inexpensive space, and he thought that this could be the place to retire. Bob's process is like weather. Sometimes like an approaching storm, clouds gathering, rumbles, wind energy picking up, flashing in the distance. Sometimes it passes by, sometimes it arrives in varying intensities. Lots of drama and crashing or gentle comforting or big floods that change the landscape of his creative thinking. But collaboration is the true spring of creativity, especially in the action of moving, stirring the air with sounds, voicing, and discovery. In September of 2010, Bob began to study movement with Anna Helprin in the San Francisco Bay Area. In December of that year, he broke his leg, and while lying in bed with the sunshine streaming in, imagining he was on a beach somewhere, he began a process that resulted in the creation of a series of article of clothing to wear that would make noise when he moved, which then evolved into various performance persona, the visitor, the fallen angel, the Iceman, spirit of Detroit, and the downtown clown. Bob's performances and compositions can be seen in their entirety on Vimeo and SoundCloud. You can also find him on his website, bobmarsh.net. Matt Reffick is the final artist in this vignette, but all 20 portraits included in Moore's Self-Doubt and The People That Inspire Me are on view at Blowback Gallery. Also on view at the gallery is Matt Reffick's exhibition entitled Purge. In Purge, Matt's paintings represent the exploration of emotions and concepts related to and representing trauma both personal and shared. Through a process of painting, he explores issues which are inhibiting life and stunting growth in various ways. He explores topics of the collective and how we often suppress the expressions of emotion and how this suppression leads to many social and personal problems. He explores these topics through art making in an effort to discover ways to forgive and heal. His aim is to have the work remove the stigmas which inhibit the understanding of trauma. Through expression of these darker parts of ourselves in our society, we can begin to have conversations which will lead to the overcoming of issues which cause pain and suffering in this world. Matt Refik is a multimedia artist based in Pueblo. Matt's work include murals, paintings, illustrations, videos, performance art, and educational courses aimed at the cultural and spiritual growth of individuals and communities. Matt has had an art practice since he was a child and has worked professionally since 2000. Having drawn since before memory and then becoming deeply immersed in graffiti art as a teen, Matt's art practice has been continuous his entire life. Mostly self-taught, Matt has used trial and error, YouTube, and various workshops to excel and learn the profession of being an artist. Purge will be on view until the end of August at Blowback Gallery, and more of his work can be seen on Facebook and Instagram at Matt Refik. <laughs>